that this is the first time of me making something like that. And due to that, there is a special segment at the end, which I would appreciate if you watched. Now enjoy the video. In the last year, speedrunning became bigger than ever. Many games got a community or at least a warm spot under the spotlight of big marathons such as GDQ or ESA. Today I'm gonna tell you about speedrun of a game that didn't get any of that despite being quite incredible in my opinion. That game is Shadow Warrior 2013. For many games without big community, you'd expect speedrun to be unoptimized or lack certain depth in tricks, glitches, performance. This hopefully will turn your world upside down. The run that we are going to inspect was done by Elmley and the clock sits slightly above 1 hour mark. He routed most, if not the entirety, of the game and even recorded segmented speedrun hold two times with times of 1 hour 7 minutes and 55 minutes after breaking and COMPLETELY breaking the game. The run itself is composed out of fast-paced action, outbounds glitches, various boosts and small techniques which makes it truly remarkable and on par criminal that not that many people saw it or even heard of it. Hell, Elmley not only did that on easiest difficulty, but also on hardest. However, the run and scope will be basic any percent. For speed purposes, we go on casual difficulty to avoid any unnecessary damage and, as old Wang would say, You are tiny grasshopper! Prologue has basically nothing interesting in it. You go in, you cut a few guys in pieces, you get captured. In chapter 1, we can start noticing that we're picking up money. This will be very important a few chapters from now. The only thing to note is that pickups are random, so if at a crucial moment we don't have enough, then... Oh well. Doing our first fight to unlock future progression, and then completely ignore our good friend Hoji by jumping on poles. Don't worry, he'll get into our head anyways. At the shrine, we learn probably the most crucial attack to this run, Divider of Heavens. Completely not broken in any way, shape, or form. Well, actually it's quite broken, as animation is quite long, allowing you to slice everyone around yourself if you are fast enough with your mouse. Getting on the roof to skip killing Yakuza, while also wasting more time than it takes to kill them, but hey, now we have no textures, so we're just navigating the nothing. After two more fights and the last money packs, we are gone from this level. Chapter 2 starts with a trusty truck. Break it, and it becomes quite a nice escalator on the side. After getting Uzi, we get back to skip even more fights. Just few jumps on the roof and we are skipping quite a lot of triggers and now running in a void. Now it would be worth noting that runs are done on downpatched version, as developers really didn't want any players going anywhere out of bounds. And I mean it. So instead of putting walls to not let players get anywhere, they decided to put death triggers all over the place. Sure, downpatched version has them in quite a huge amounts as well, so some of these out of bounds adventures have to be done very carefully. While the level itself isn't loaded, all collisions are still intact, so navigation is just a matter of memorization. One more fight, one more forest section, and we are out at the last arena. Worth noting that until fight starts, post fight triggers are generally available in this game, so instead of fighting our first warlord, we'll just dash at the door and hit the tiny switch before fight starts. Chapter 3 starts with quite an annoying fight. After it, we shoot the truck to skip second installment of the set fight by vaulting over truck with the parts that we get. While slashing through sewers, we're getting close to the Vank hideout. As you might have noticed, dash ability is quite useful in moving around, but it is also useful to get weird launches, bounces. Just getting right angle and instead of eating our entire speed, game corrects our vector to a direction set by stones or other object we hit. By using that knowledge, we can get out of pool area and skip yet another fight. Getting our sick haircut and crossbow, small backtracking, dashing to the car, ta-da! We skipped entire turret section and the level is pretty much over at this point. Getting to a secret where more secret cache is waiting and just escaping boundaries once again. You start seeing a pattern here, do you? After quickly getting back just a few gates, we rush into the last fight that we are forced to take in that stage, where we can also get some extra big cash under the bridge. In chase of a golem figure with the sword, we get to the press cemetery area and are supposed to destroy a few statues, but... I'd rather be kicking ass than solve this stupid puzzle. <sighs> 
despite some tough luck and having to open extra boxes to get extra big cash, we are finally at the sacred 1400. Keep good memory of this weapon menus, we'll never see it again. Using all our money on high strain system for crossbow and use our katana mastery points to buff attack by 50%. All of that becomes instantly utilized at the first shaman fight. With some luck and precision, you can actually skip the forced invulnerability phase of every summoner in the game, but otherwise you can just trigger that phase very quick. Remember I said that the dash ability is very useful? Oh, and that as well. The kind of good level, except for that detour I have to take. Final fight and we're off to a Whisperer. This is first time in the round you get to properly relax for a good chunk of time. At least if your PC loads fast, so cherish it. Beat the drums! Time for our first boss, Gozu. He can open with one of three attacks and we get a good one. Except we miss quick first chi line, but let's just ignore that for a second. And this boss is pretty much how every boss works in the game, more or less. Shoot armor, chi line opens, shoot it with crossbow charge or later with a rocket launcher. Uh, repeat until our armor is gone. Armor almost always takes damage, so after boss is staggered once, it is staggered forever. As far as we don't miss the shots, of course. Phase 2, which is basically phase 1 with a different moveset and only a chest piece to hit. Once boss is down, you can uh, collect some ammo. Next three chapters have something in common. They are skipped almost entirely. First we blow up a car and go out and oh, what's that? An exit! Next we shoot yet another car and after a bit of running on the wires... Gotta mention, this is extremely precise movement, and any small mistake will drop you on the ground and probably even kill you or softlock you. One careful drop down, and we are in the last room of a level. Just opening the gates and ta-da! Last one in line. Getting on a forklift, then on a ship, then on a crane, then on a crate! Careful not to fall down here. And outside of a level. Then a leap of faith to the level ending trigger, and that's about Two and a half hours of my first playthrough in just under two minutes? Ooh, chapter 10. If everything before seemed and sort of was fairly simple, this is where things begin to ramp up in difficulty. Very first boost in that stage has so many tiny details to it that performing it quick or at least figuring out every nuance is batshit crazy hard. You gotta stay in specific spot on a tree, look at specific angle, dash diagonally towards the lamp, get enough height, and also get on the lamp, and don't over jump it. Timing and positioning here is close to pixel perfect. After getting up, the rest of part is somewhat simple. We dash to the tree, we dash to the lamp again, but this time we bounce of it, and we land on a wall. Now we just follow a simple out of bounce route and get to the part where we already have blown up the ship together with the girls. Sad we never got to know them during the run. Getting up the wreck, simple dash across the tier in the ship, and we gotta land on the bars because otherwise we'll die. And then we need to carefully navigate to the seal, but from the out of bounds side of the level. Sticking our sword in a hole where it can barely bypass floor collision and then head back to the door. Floor, or ceiling in this case, I guess? Isn't really rendered, so we can interact with the door and Van can magically teleport to open it. A few more fights and we get to a shipwreck. Don't forget this beauty on your way. Oh, and did I ever mention that Divider of Heaven is pretty good? So yeah, the shipwreck. Instead of going down to fight our first Berserk, we can just dash to the Whisperer and slash her to end the level. Second boss of the game, Mezu. While going to him, we can speed up a bit by doing a couple dashes to specific areas. That boss fight is a bit different from Gozu due to the fact that we actually can't deal damage to armor until he is down on the arena. So we gotta wait for the seals to open and then once boss is down on the arena we can hit his chest piece. Chi line hitbox on this guy is extremely finicky to hit with charge balls so rocket launcher works much better but getting ammunition is random so you gotta adapt. After last seal is open we need to hit wings. If you start shooting too early or too late, all the rockets might just fly past them as he's moving around. After that it's last chest piece, last chi line and it's time to go for Zilla. More or less relaxing level after difficult boss fight and before longest stage in the run. We can easily get out of bounds and then navigating by the lights we can skip all auto scroller sections and all side sections of the level. 
At the end, it is important to hop before the door to not get stuck between two. Then we land on the platform and activate the door from behind and level is over. Gotcha, gotcha. Now it is time for the longest stage in the game. Surprisingly sturdy and well scripted one. Probably partially due to the fact that this level is vertical and we can't just climb up the hill. As most of climbable surfaces are covered with death triggers or simply unreachable. Last time visiting our katana mastery tree to get life leech, which will be our main healing source from now on. To open the door we gotta fight summoner and his friends, destroy the shrine and get back to where we were. Taking all these fights is unfortunately unavoidable. You activate elevator as fast as possible, then kill everyone as fast as possible, and go to the main hub area. I the tiger, Boji. I of the tiger. Just have to wait. Oh. After everyone's slashed, we can start our pursuit of Zilla in one of many areas of this tower. Instead of going around to this shrine, we can just hit it through the wall and continue on our journey. After taking a few more shrines, we get back to the main area where we're supposed to have yet another battle. However, if we don't go close to the center, it won't start and we'll be just able to leave. Wasn't that important, I guess. Taking all the guys in the staircase arena and then, when all projectile demons spawn, we use the bit of air control that we have to hop alongside the wall, while also standing on the tiny platform then dash across, which will save us extra 15 seconds moving around and sparing us shooting demons. Now we get outside again, and by doing simple jump here, skipping just one platform, we can skip the entire trigger that spawns flying demons. Instead of taking an elevator and being forced into the turret section, we are going to bounce off the said turret and go up one of few more or less climbable walls. It's very important not to go too high up, left, right, as you might just hit one of many death triggers placed around. All that allows us to bypass an elevator and save around 30 seconds to a minute. This tricky pallet jump allows us to skip one more fight, yet it can waste even more time than the set fight. And now basically the final arena of this level. Two berserkers, more lord, a few shield bearers. And now we climb the rest of the mountain and hit the switch from below the cart. It's just extra few seconds, but we gotta have all the time so we can in such a long level. Now. If I said chapter 10 was difficult, next few stages are an actual nightmare. Chapter 14 starts with demonic Yakuza fight, and after that fight you have basically two choices. Go for old route and waste around 5 minutes, or go for new route and you have a chance of wasting your run, your life, your sanity and probably something else. Well obviously going for a sick run we're gonna be risking it all, so we'll just jump on control panel and go out of bounds. From here on out it's just us and cold nothing. Just a few visual cues and bunch of ways to fall off the invisible wires. So here's how it goes. You get on the roof and then you drop down but you gotta manage to stay on the invisible wall. What if I don't? Nice. Then you go forward until you hit another invisible wall. Small sidestep to the left then you jump and do another small sidestep to the right. Walk forward until you get to invisible wall on left of you. In fact, you can track it with some visual cues below the level. Now get on the said wall, and since it is Japanese style wall, you want to be on its top to dash further. And from specific spot, you want to dash to the tree. If everything was done right, you won't die after hitting the tree. Congratulations, you made it. From there, it's just a matter of few steps before you get to the last whisperer. But to pull off all this movement in a short time frame, you need to be very knowledgeable about these invisible walls as they are incredibly easy to fall off in so many places where you can just get bad position for a tree charge. But if you ever manage to get it to the point of how segmented run does it, you'll probably know what's up there. Now chapter 15 is basically an interactive cutscene. Now grab Xing and head to Hoji. There's just a few dashes to save you a tiny bit of time. Hoji's room is an auto-scroller, so you want to bring him instruments as fast as possible. And given the fact that they're always at the same spot, it really isn't that difficult. You can also get to the lad and inspect his beautiful face, since he doesn't have the mask during this section. The last gatekeeper of the run is coming. But first things first, dash off the border to get a boost on the wall and then get back and bounce in unloaded area. At the bridge there are a few last boys to cut and blow. After that, instead of going straight, we go on a small detour on the right to skip enemies spawning. Now this, unlike chapter 14, separates real men from amateurs. 
You can break all three shrines and do final arena, which will take around 3-4 minutes if you do it well. Or you can go and hang your on on the tree for extra 2-3 minutes of time save. And that's if you manage to get the skip, of course. Well, it's world record drawn, so of course, trick is a must. So, what's the catch? Well, once again, it is a multitude of tiny moves that can go very wrong very fast, and unless you know what you're doing and what kind of invisible shapes you're dealing with, you can get stuck there for a long, long time. But here how it goes. Go around temple until ground is no more, drop on a platform and then dash across, climb up and get stuck on invisible wall, climb that wall and then dash at the tree at specific spot at specific angle. Bounce off one invisible barrier and get on another invisible barrier. Here you can actually get different landings, but we got the best one, so we're getting to the last part of climbing the tree. From where we are, we just need to jump forward and drop to Zilla. Save beforehand in case the game softlocks, and ta-da! Last hard part of run is done. The skip somewhere on Elm Lee's channel has an entire video dedicated to it. But just from watching it and trying the thing for an hour, you probably still won't understand how the tree works. Trust me, I've been there for 3 hours still, and I still don't want to do this skip if I ever come back to running this game. A grand finale! At this point, Elmin knew that the run was secured. It's actually impossible to fail at this point. Last stage is in fact quite simple, so all that's left is one last quite underwhelming boss. Here it is, Xing's headless body. First phase is already waiting for us in the distance, shooting arrows, and it only requires one chi line to be taken down in order to progress the level. We however want to damage all armor parts with rocket launcher, that will allow us to speed through phase 3. For the second phase we no longer have a sword, so we'll take him down with rocket launcher and crossbow. Small dash into a void allows us to save extra few seconds from not having to cross the arena. After doing the talking, dash back to arena and head towards the boss. After we hit him once with a rocket, he has already all his armor weakened. So as soon as he's standing up, he's gonna be instantly falling down. Break all chi lines until his sword is out of a body, slash it and now the final stretch. Run back to Enra, cut him, run back to Amion and Hoji and it's time to stop the time. And then... Just 1 hour, 1 minute and 40 seconds, it is done. As Elmley says himself... I don't think I'm gonna try to do this category anymore. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna try to do that. And no wonder! All the hard tricks were insanely quick in this run, even though few still took its toll. Is this the end for Shadow Warrior 2013? Has it been routed and ran over to the grave by just one guy? Only time will tell. Segmented run is still 10 minutes faster in real time, and probably about the same in in-game time if loadings are removed. And I also highly recommend watching that run, which I link in description. Also, go give Elmley a follow on Twitch, where he mostly does speedruns of classic Doom nowadays. But how close can human get to that segmented record? If there ever is one such to try. I myself know three people, including myself, who tried learning this run and didn't stand the frustration. Finishing under 2 hours real time is insanely difficult and to go for world record you pretty much have to get to know invisible walls and douche tree very closely. But maybe one day someone will challenge the game. Hey, uh, that's me, and that means the video is over, and uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll really like to know what all of you thought of it, and what you think I'd done bad, and what I could have done better, or like, if the entire thing sucked terribly. Uh, at this point, video is pretty much done, I mean, I'm still, rec uh, still, the project is still open, but um, at this point I just need to put this video at the end, roll the credits, and whatnot and uh, I gonna say that I kind of really enjoyed making this video it was really fun uh, despite the fact that it took over a week and quite a few evenings because uh, I'm not that speedy with like editing and everything but uh, I'm looking forward to making more of these these um, uh, next one will not be the same format as this one so it won't be like just me going through the entire run uh, it will be slightly different, I already know what game I want to do, and what category and whatnot. But it doesn't mean that you uh, should not be um, suggesting your ideas. So, uh, some of them I might ignore because I just think that the games are overexposed or like uh, too many people already done everything and I can't really um, sh uh, add something extra to, the, to, to make my point of view stand out among other people. Um, but yeah, um, Shadow Warrior, I kind of knew the game 
from the beginning that I want to make something for this game. I tried to relearning it many times and I just couldn't. So I decided, hell, I'll, I'll make this video about it. Because it's a great game and it deserves some people at least knowing about it. But yeah, uh, leave your opinions in the comments below. And I really don't have anything else to say. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and if not, I'll try to do better next time. <laughs> I'll see you on streams on my, ch uh, on my channel uh, pretty much tomorrow, today, now. Go watch all the videos. Alright, anyway, bye.